you guys. Hey there beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. Do I have a topic for you guys today? What do you do when a hive is queenless for too long? If you are a beginner beekeeper, then this is a video that you really, really need to watch and understand fully because it can save you not only your bees, but also a lot of stings. And it can also help you to thrive in your apiary because if you don't understand this, you can end up losing a lot of your bees. So let's dive into the video. First thing first, we have to understand what it means when a hive is queenless. Now, you would know by now that the queen is the most important bee inside of the hive. The reason why the queen is the most important bee in the hive is because she lays all the eggs and she ensures that the hive is thriving and keeping the population at adequate levels. Without her, there's no new bees coming in. So the old bees are dying off, there's no new bees coming in to replace those jobs. That means death for the hive. A hive becomes queenless when the queen dies, leaves during a swarm, or she does not return from her mating flight. If a queen is not introduced quickly, things are going to get very chaotic. So how do we detect that our hive is indeed queenless. So, what are the signs that your hive is indeed queenless? It is crucial for you to know this as early on as possible before things get horrible. Number one, there are no eggs and no larva in that hive. That is one of the quickest and easy ways to identify that this hive does not have a queen. This just confirms that they are in trouble. Number two is unusual behavior. You might see the bees moving around in weird patterns. You may also notice that they are a lot more aggressive towards everything around the hive. This is a clear telltale sign that the queen is no longer there because the worker bees are feeling unsure about their future. Number three, you will notice emergency queen cells being created. Depending on when this queen has left, you should see some emergency cells forming within three days after she has left. If you do see some emergency queen cells, just leave the hive alone. They will take the normal process of requeening. If you do indeed not see any emergency queen cells, then you have a serious problem and you need to take action very, very quickly. You might be wondering, why is the queen so important? Why can the hive not function and thrive without her? The queen is the most important bee because she lays the eggs. She's the only bee in the hive that can lay eggs. Therefore, without new eggs coming in, there is no new bees being born. That means the old bees are dying out and there are no new bees coming in. The queen also releases a pheromone that unifies the hive and makes every single bee work together. Think of her as the glue in the hive. With her pheromones, she's able to ensure that everybody is doing what they are supposed to be doing when they are supposed to be doing it. Now, without her there, this no longer happens, which means chaos erupts. What happens when your hive is queenless for too long? What are the potential consequences of this? Number one. A dwindling population. The queen is responsible for laying all the eggs and replenishing the old bees with new bees. With her not being able to do that, it means that the old bees are going to die off and there will be no new bees to take up the jobs 
that are supposed to be done in the hive. Number two, laying workers. In a desperate attempt, the workers will start laying unfertilized eggs. Therefore, they are making male bees. This does not help the hive at all because the drones, the male bees, don't collect food sources and tend to the activities in the hive. A drone heavy hive is doomed to collapse. Number three, hive aggression. As the time passes without the bees being with the queen, they will become more aggressive and hostile. They can even end up fighting amongst each other and fighting with anything that is around their heart. This aggression can lead to some serious injuries for anybody or anything that comes close to that hive. Number four is robbing from other hives. With this hive being queenless, they become defenseless. This means that other hives that have stronger populations can infiltrate this hive due to the dwindling population of bees inside and start robbing out this hive of its valuable resources. Number five, total and complete collapse. The only way that you can save this type of hive is with a queen. But if you have a hive that has laying workers, just introducing a queen is not going to save them. This does not guarantee success. We as beekeepers have a methodical way of trying to overturn this hive and try and save it. But this does not mean that the hive can be saved. That is why you need to act quickly when you see your hive does not have a queen and there are no queen cells inside of the hive. You have to introduce a queen fairly fast to prevent the laying workers. The moment that the workers start laying their own eggs, the chances of saving this hive has drastically increased. It will be a lot more difficult for you to ensure the survival of this hive. How do we rescue a hive that does not have a queen? Well, there are only four ways that you can do this. Number one, you need to introduce a queen as quick as possible. Get a brand new queen either by purchasing it or if you do have some extra queens, you can introduce the queen to this hive. Number two is you can combine this hive with another existing hive. You simply take a piece of newspaper, place it on top of the hive, which you want to merge it with, and simply place the box without the queen on top of the newspaper. The bees will eat through the newspaper and this will allow them to integrate safely without trying to kill each other. Number three is natural replacement. If you do see some queen cells inside of the hive, just leave the bees to create a new queen, leave her to go out and mate. I normally give every beginner beekeeper this advice. Simply leave the hive alone for two weeks and after two weeks, check if you have some eggs inside. Number four, if you do have laying workers and you have confirmed that there are laying workers inside of your hive, there is two things you can do. Number one, you can introduce a frame of small larvae, so not capped over brood at all. It has to be a frame with eggs, and small little larva on it. It means that the larva is between, the, uh, the eggs is between one to three days old and the larva is still um, small enough before they are capped over. You can introduce a frame like this into the hive and those pheromones will somehow reverse the laying worker effect. It is, it has helped, it does work, um, it depends. Uh, do not introduce a new queen as most of the time I have found in my own experience they will simply just kill the queen. The laying workers will kill the queen and it will be null and by. It will not be worth it. So the best thing that I have found is try and introduce a frame of 
uncapped brood needs to be eggs it needs to be larva nothing must be capped over the other thing you can do is to leave nature to take its course simply remove all of the resources dump the bees on the ground and allow the workers that are not laying to return to some of your other hives to boost your other hives um, it is not a good idea to merge that hive with another hive that's my personal advice I don't want those laying workers to get into my existing hive and potentially kill a strong queen in a strong hive. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do I prevent this one? Instead of having all of these problems on my hand, what can I do as a beekeeper to prevent this from happening to my bees? Here are three things that you can do to prevent this from happening. Number one, regular bee inspections i do my i do weekly inspections during spring and summer and i do two weekly um, i do an inspection once every two weeks during the winter seasons i prefer to interact with my bees on a regular basis i know that this is a lot more work especially when you are a commercial beekeeper but I have found that this is a really great way to manage your hives more proactively and to catch these issues before they become chaotic. Requeen when necessary. If your queen gets old or you notice that her laying pattern is, a, is not as strong as it used to be, consider requeening her before you get an issue that arises. I know of some commercial beekeepers that requeen their hives every single year to ensure that the hive flourishes and they do not run into these types of problems. Number three, monitor swarming. It is very important to ensure that there is adequate space for the bees to expand. If every single frame within the hive is filled up with resources, the likelihood of that queen swarming is fairly high. Swarming can occur because of two things. Number one, the workers don't have enough space, they feel crowded and therefore they will force a swarm to happen. That means they will create the swarming cells or queen cells before the existing queen has left. This is their way of telling her that they don't have space, she needs to go and build a new colony. The other time that you will see swarms happen is when there is something irritating the hive or if the hive is just in that swarming spree and they, the queen wants to leave, you need to inspect the hive. The moment that you see queen cells, you know that a swarm is going to happen and you need to take appropriate measures to either create an artificial swarm or remove the queen cells that are inside to prevent the swarming. The best way to prevent swarming is give the bees more space and if you do see queen cells inside of the hive, it's better to split them into two and create an artificial swarm. And there you have it. The queen is the heart of the hive. Everything revolves around her. Without a good quality queen, the hive is doomed. Ensure that your hives have good quality queens because that will keep them buzzing all over the place. Thank you so much guys for joining me in this video. I really hope that this can help you to prevent laying workers inside of your hive and help you to become a better beekeeper. If you enjoyed this video guys please give it a thumbs up also hit that subscribe button as I'm going to be dropping a lot more videos like this for beginner beekeepers to help them to manage their hives more proactively and to flourish as beekeepers. Because I know how scary it was the first time when I started beekeeping and I want to be here to help and support you all the way to success.